we're here today with Simon in person. Um, he's here in London and has just come back from a very exciting trip. So, uh, Simon, you, your followers will probably know you've been in Sweden. Um, why? Well, <laughs> because, <laughs> because a comedian sent me a, a message on Twitter and said, why don't we go to Sweden? So, uh, so that, was, that was why. Um, but what, what an eye-opener, actually. You, you kind of read in the papers about, you know, Sweden did this and Sweden did that, and, and people will say what a great model it is and all the rest of it, but you, you can't experience... You, you, it's really difficult to enunciate just how different life yeah. is over there to how life is here. Um, it, 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 it's kind of uplifting in one way and depressing in another that, that you think that... It could have been like that, and it nearly yeah. was like that in the yeah. UK, because Boris, when he started off, he wanted to go the Swedish route, and the media piled on him and said, no, we have to have yeah. lockdown, no, we have to have lockdown. And because he's a politician, he did what the media told him, because he didn't want to be unpopular. Yeah. And that's unforgivable in my... He's, yeah. a, he's a leader. He had, Margaret Thatcher said something which was very true once. She said, we don't do what's popular, we do what's right. Yeah. If he'd have done what was right, we wouldn't have wasted 300 billion. Uh, it's not their money, it's our money, you know, yeah. taxpayers' money. We wouldn't have wasted all that money. We wouldn't have killed 75 or 100,000 or whatever the reports are. Uh, you know, people wouldn't be locked up in, in universities now. You know, there, there's a million, which we all know about, a million things that have gone wrong because of what he did. Um, and I do blame him. I do blame one man. He's the prime minister and he should have done something different. Yeah. And he can still do something different. You know, it's, what is it, nearly October now, and they're still going on about bloody local lockdowns and all this rubbish, knowing full well that it doesn't work. Because we've got the model, we've got Sweden. Yeah. And people say, um, oh, well, Sweden's different, you can't compare it, because the, 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 their population density yeah. is so much lower. Well, it is in the countryside, but our countryside is really not exactly. dense, you know, exactly. full of people, but our cities are. Yeah. I mean, and as, yeah. you, you know, as you know, we were stuck in a traffic jam in Stockholm for three hours. It's packed. Yeah. It's rammed full of people. Yeah. Um, so you can. There's a million people in Stockholm. So that is a statistically, that is a really yeah. good sample. You know, Absolutely. if it didn't work, they they would have, you know, deaths all over the place, and they haven't. And people say, oh, we compare it with Denmark and Finland, and they're they're different, and you can only compare with your neighbours. Yeah. Well, where Sweden got yeah. it wrong yeah. was the care homes. Yeah. The difference is, is that Anders Tegner, the the, uh, the health guy that uh, that put all this in place. Uh, he got it wrong and, and, and he admitted that yeah. and said, I'm sorry, and, and I think it will probably haunt him. Um, but because he's not a politician, mm -hmm. he can apologise and, yeah. and he can move on and say he got it wrong. That's the difference in deaths. Yeah. If they had not got it wrong with the care homes, then they would have been the same as Denmark and Finland and Iceland and so on. And people have said to me this week, they've said about the population thing, and um, I, you know, I live in the rural countryside and flying into Stockholm, I saw more people in probably, you know, two hours than I have in the last six weeks. Um, and yet everyone at home is, you know, they're masked. They're masked in the street now, you know. It's not just in the shops and in the public transport. Um, I think the thing that really stood out to me is seeing the smiles, and we were talking about that on the way home, is the oppression and the fear that you're reminded of day in, day out. Whereas you go over there and you, you just see the smiles. And I think that's part of what uplifted the atmosphere. How was it meeting uh, Anders? Well, it was quite a surprise, actually, because obviously we went, we went to the press conference and we, we knew we were going to speak to someone from the, uh, from the Public Health Authority. And, uh, and, and he was gracious enough to give us, you know, quite a lot of time. And uh, how was it? I don't know, he's almost a bit, because he's now so famous worldwide, I suppose you, it's quite of a bit, like meeting any celebrity, I guess, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, but you're just struck by how humble and how, um, just, th th there is a, a confidence that exudes from him. Yeah. And I think that was why, you know, this one man actually did make the difference. He was the difference between Sweden being devastated, like England has been. Yeah. Um, or being free like yeah. they are now, you know, just that one guy. And that's really, uh, that's really quite inspirational. You know, one person can make a difference and one person does make a difference. Yeah. Um, and I think history will look extremely kindly on him. You know, there are some people in Sweden who, who, uh, who don't like him and think he's done it all wrong. Yeah. Uh, and to them I would say, come here. Yes, yeah. You know, the only people who are complaining in Sweden 
were people who have never been yeah. to another country and seen it. And, and equally, I mean, the ridiculous thing is I've had from the posts I've made on social media and stuff, uh, I put a, just a stupid uh, uh, photo up of just a busy high street, basically, and said, I've never, never been so pleased to see people shopping. I hate shopping. Um, and, and I don't like crowds either, so it was a bit strange. But it was lovely to see that yeah. there was all this life going on. Yeah. And people were tweeting me and saying, that's not a real photo. That mm -hmm. must have been taken six months ago. Said, yeah. Why don't you want to believe this? Yeah. You know, Sean put a, a, a video up. It was me and Sean walking down the high street in Stockholm for like 10 seconds. And it's had half a million views. Yeah. People just want to see a busy high street, yeah. you know. And, uh, and I think you said someone in, uh, someone in Canada who, who said you need to hold a newspaper up with the date on it to prove that you were actually there. Well, why don't you want to believe it? You know, why don't these people want to believe that life is really good over there? Yeah. What is it like being back in London? Uh, what's it like coming back? It's a bit... It's, I don't want to be too disparaging because, I mean, let's face it, we came in on the plane, I had a row with a guy at the airport, but, but he was always going to be... He was a pain in the ass last year. <laughs> you know, this, this didn't make him a pain in the ass. And then we sat in a taxi and we got to the hotel and, and I like standing Claridge's, which is where we are. And they're lovely and they know me and everything's perfect, you know. So I don't want to be too disparaging. I think it will be interesting going out tomorrow and, and seeing what it's like. But I suppose the depressing thing is how quiet London is. Yeah. I mean, we could see that. OK, it's a Sunday, but we could see it yeah. as we were coming in. And there's just not enough people around to sustain the city. Yeah. Um, so that's... You know, that's pretty, pretty miserable. And everybody in the hotel wear, having to wear masks, all of them hating it, yeah. all of them not being able to breathe properly. You know, you can't quite understand what they're saying and they don't want to do it, but they have to wear them. They're forced to wear them. What now, having been postponed, what, what is happening with the case? What's, where are you with the legal process? Well, we've got some interesting news, which, um, depending on when this is aired, I, I can't really share at the moment, but th th there's something that's, th that's coming up which will be, uh, I think, exciting is the wrong word, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the word is, but it, I think it's interesting news. The, 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 the actual hearing will take place on the October 29th. Great. Um, because they couldn't have the one on September the 23rd, which would have been last week, because uh, one of the government lawyers was on holiday. So what are your hopes, obviously, aside from, well, combining with the judicial review, but what are your hopes... What are your hopes for the future? I mean, people who are sat at home at the moment who are feeling pretty bleak, you know, Christmas might be cancelled and all this fear looming in the media. Um, do you feel the tides are turning? And, and what are your hopes for the future? Well, again, coming back from Sweden, you got to see what life used to be like. And life will go back to that. Yeah. I, I have no doubt about that whatsoever. You know, there is there is a way it works and, and this has been proven to work over there and eventually they'll catch up here and they'll get and we'll get back to normal life so i think that's a uh, that's really a hopeful message i don't know whether it's going to be in october or november or whatever but judicial review no judicial review whatever the legal case says we will get back to how it was so it would, there'll be a lot of pieces to pick up you know the, the taxes will go up and there'll be austerity measures and uh, unemployment will go up and all the rest of it but we'll we will get life back yeah. And people will laugh again in comedy clubs and people will go to nightclubs yeah. and football stadiums will fill up. We just need to be patient, I guess. You know, Boris could stand up tomorrow and, and say it all, yeah. you know, and I think he'd probably be, despite everything, if he did actually get up and say, right, all regulations, let's, let's just yeah. go back. I think he'd be a, he would probably be remembered as a hero. Yeah. Um, as it happens, he'll be remembered as a coward and he'll be gone by Christmas. I, I, I know that. Well, okay. just after Christmas, he, he'll be gone. Rishi Sunak will be the new prime minister. Um, and at that time, I think they'll probably start. He'll Because he's been unsullied by the whole thing. Yeah. Because he's been the one dishing all the money out. Mm -hmm. um, and the Tories need someone who will still be popular. Yeah. He'll be the new leader. Yeah. And at January, he'll say, right, we need to learn to live with the virus. We're going to start opening things up. Yeah. I, I believe that that is what will happen. Yeah. Um, as I say, court case or no court case. So while we were in Sweden, we saw that the people were given a lot of choices and a lot of freedoms to make their own decisions, which is sadly lacking in, in, in the rest of, of the world, really. Um, but the thing that really stood out to me is that at the beginning, when there was a, a perceived threat, 
um, those choices that people were making were to um, take their children perhaps um, out of school or you know to, to react in, in a way where they felt that they were under threat and it, it, at the start it was an unknown enemy now it's not now we have data um, so obviously there are a lot of people complying there's a lot of people who um, have certainly thought that uh, people who are against lockdown are, are going to kill their families. Yes, the tide is turning, um, but how do we talk to those people, the people who are genuinely still fearful? Well, I think there's two lots of people. You've got the people that are still you know, genuinely wanting to do the right thing. I'm not sure how many people there are that are really afraid of catching this thing and dying. I don't, I, I'm not so sure that there's many of them around, but I do think that they've been guilted into doing the things that they do, the lockdown and so on and wearing masks, because they feel as though they're preventing, they're, they're doing something yeah. for the greater good. Yeah. Um, and I suppose what I would say to them is, is you know, they're, they're just really nice people who yeah. have been manipulated, basically. But if they want to carry on wearing masks and, and staying at home because they feel as though they're doing some good, well, crack on. But all, all I would say is, is that you need to just l look at some numbers. Yeah. Just, just rather than going on, you know, kind of mainstream, whatever it is that you've been looking at up to date. Yeah. Just open your eyes just a little bit and look at numbers, look at yeah. deaths, and then compare that with deaths for everything else. Yeah. The numbers are so low. You know, the numbers, I don't know, people have a, a really, the wrong idea of what these numbers actually are when they say about increases in cases and 5,000 new cases today and all the rest of it. It's about 20 or 30 cases per 100,000. Mm. And these are just positive cases for a cold virus, yeah. a coronavirus. Yeah. Um, not that these people have got symptoms, just that they might be carrying a yeah. bit of the virus. Doesn't mean they're going to spread it. And then when you work those numbers out, mm. you think, well, that's, that's like one in a thousand yeah. or two in a thousand or three in a thousand. The chances of me having it yeah. are that, yeah. one or two in a thousand. Yeah. The chances of me sneezing on someone and then spreading it and then them catching it is another one in a thousand, you know? So, um, yeah, just again, look at numbers, look at the actual yeah. numbers because the media can give you different pictures depending on what they want to show you. Mm -hmm. But what they can't do ever is to manipulate, well, they have, kind of have done, but look at the death figures, the death with yeah. COVID, yeah. and you'll see it's yeah. three a day, four yeah. a day, eight a day, six a day, none today. And that, to me, I, was actually very reassuring because, I mean, you know me, you've known me for, for a long time, and I, I I wouldn't like to call myself a hypochondriac, but I'm no, certainly... I definitely yeah. would agree with that, yeah. <laughs> Germophobic well, no, hypochondriac. No, not a hypochondriac, but somebody and who's a very aware flyer. of... Yeah, a terrible flyer. Um, very aware of germs and... and um, I've always been one to carry hand gel before, you know, before it became popular. Um, and actually, I have to say, one thing that I found really reassuring is actually seeing the numbers of cases go up whilst the deaths remained incredibly low because it meant that those people who were testing positive, who are either asymptomatic or, or they're not dying with it, you know? We're not, we're not seeing this second spike of people dropping dead in the street. What we're seeing actually is a herd immunity situation naturally occurring, which obviously would a process would have been speeded up had we gone down the other route, but is, is something that actually I find reassuring is if that many people have it and only that many people die. I mean, even the 50,000 a day and 200 a day figure is ridiculous and ludicrous and not, you know, not even a prediction as, as they've admitted. Um, but what they're saying then is that percentage chance isn't one in 10. It's not, you know, it's, it's, very small. It's less than 1%. Um, I think maybe what people could ask themselves is a, is a really good question is if, if this thing is, is as bad as the media have been portraying it, mm -hmm. why did they shift from reporting deaths, which we got every day, yeah. rammed down our throat, why, did they why do they not report deaths anymore yeah. but just report cases? Yeah. You just need to ask yourself that question and you think, well, why would they? Yeah. If there was loads of deaths and it was all going up and everything, they would just say, well, 35 people have died, yeah. 100 people have died, 200 people have died. They haven't, and they haven't done since, what, for two months? Yeah. Maybe three months or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think people can do that. And, and it was a bit like we were sort of talking off camera earlier about, you know, people living their lives. Mm. And maybe they've become so 
brainwashed into this way of thinking that it's all they're concentrating on, the social media and the news and the bad news and how awful it is and staying at home and not going out and everything and, and just go and do something that you enjoy doing. Yeah. You know, you're not going to kill anyone. Go, yeah. and, go and kind of live a little bit. And then you, it's like we, when we went to Sweden, it just opened your eyes. Yeah. God, that's how life used to be. Oh, it's so yeah. nice. Just people laughing and smiling and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I don't think you need to feel bad about it, but you do need to be just a little bit slightly open-minded and be willing to have your your preconceived notions just kind of changed a little yeah. bit but it will be for the good you will feel better yeah. once you've done it yeah. it's not going to be a bad thing yeah? while we were out there um it seemed that the tide seemed to be turning a little bit for example um the news and the way that the protests yesterday um were reported um, firstly, they, they made it into the mainstream media um, in a way that they didn't last time. Um, and equally, the language that was being used um, seemed very different. Um, does that give you a sense of hope? It, yeah, it, it shows you that something's turned. Yeah. Because the BBC, as we know, uh, are driven by the government, yeah. basically. Um, and the reason I say this is not conspiracy theory. The reason I say that is that the Gina Miller Judicial Review have there's got over 150 yeah. articles on the BBC website. Yeah. Our Judicial Review has got none. Yeah. That, that's, that's an editorial decision. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's not that the, this case is not important. You know, it's, I would, it's, it's far more important, I think. So, um, so we know that they've been biased all the way along the line. We know that the likes of uh, GMB and, and, uh, and Piers Morgan have been pushing a narrative, yeah. I think for different reasons. Piers just wants to be liked. Yeah. He's probably got a small dick or bullied at school or something <laughs> like that but he, he just wants to say things you know um, and yesterday when when I was looking on the on the social media with the protests uh, first of all ITV came out with the first report which was uh, tens of thousands of lockdown protesters in Trafalgar Square yeah. and no mention of anti-vax 5g yeah. conspiracy theorists yeah. far-right fascists this that or the other it was just literally reporting the facts yeah well, how cool is that? And then a couple of hours later, BBC ran pretty yes. much the same story. And then you think, yeah, something's changed. That's yeah. editorial. Yeah. Something has changed. Yeah. They've been told to frame it in a different way. Yeah. And that can only mean that the government want this narrative shifting, yeah. you know, rather than trying to make normal people, which is what they are. These yeah. are normal people just going to, 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 to Trafalgar Square because they want to feel as though they're yeah. doing something. They're not idiots, you know, and there's a few pictures of silly people there, but then that's, that's why I don't particularly like protests is because it's so easy to be hijacked and, yeah. and make the cause look awful. Um, but these are just normal people, you know, yeah. middle-aged people who are just fed up being um, uh, told, what told what to, what do, to do, I yeah. guess. So, uh, yeah, I, that was really hopeful. Um, and then stuff going on in the rest of the world, you know, I think even Australia, uh, Victoria, yeah. um, which has been so... Uh, just like a fascist yeah. state. I mean, just awful pictures. Even they've started to, to relax just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Florida. Florida has come out, a guy from there right. has come out the other day and said, you know, basically the deaths were all massively overstated and we're just opening everything up and yeah. let's crack on. So the world picture is, is changing. Um, so as much as it's kind of weird coming back to London and, and a bit sad in some respects, I have come away with, uh, yeah, a lot of hope. Right. More so than I've felt in a long time, actually. I feel as though there's an end. You know, you feel as though the end's in sight now. Nice. Thank you. And it's, it's lovely to know that with the judicial review coming up, with um, the documentary coming up, something exciting that, that you haven't shared yet, um, <laughs> there's lots, yeah. of, uh, lots of things for, for people who follow KBF to look forward to and, and stay tuned for. So thank you very much for, for being in your hotel room. Well, well thank you very much for coming <laughs> in my hotel room. <laughs>